Mark chapter five, they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gerasenes. And when he had come out of the boat, there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who lived among the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been bound with the fetters and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart and the feathers he broke in pieces and no one had the strength to subdue him night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones and then he saw jesus from afar he ran and worshiped him and crying out with a loud voice he said what have you to do with me jesus son of the most high god I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him eagerly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they begged him, send us, on the, send us to the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them leave and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd numbering about 2,000 rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demonic sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And the man who had had the legion, they were afraid. And those with with the, um, and those who had seen it told what had happened to the demonic act and to the swine. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. But he refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim it in Decapolis, how much Jesus had done for him and all men marveled. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. I'll stop there. Verse 21, Mark chapter five, verse 21. And let me see if this is a King James. Not that it matters, I just wanted to see. This is from the Omicron Social Club of 1954. I ate too much sugar, my eyesight. The Holy Bible, Old and New Testament, Revised Standard Version from Thomas, Thomas Nelson and Son. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you right now, God, for your, your kingdom spirit, your, your, your Holy Spirit, your powerful spirit, your all-knowing, all-seeing spirit, the ancient of days spirit, the living God. I thank you right now, God. I thank you because you are God alone and you are God all by yourself. Father, as Jesus crossed over in the boat and came to the dry land of gatherings, there he was met and approached by a man who was filled with demons. Those demons had caused that man to cut and bruise himself. He could be heard in the tomb cutting and bruising himself day and night, the Bible says. Cutting, bruising, crying out loud day and night. And lo and behold, Jesus comes across on a boat and when he gets there, the man hollers out afar off, Jesus, what do you have to do with me? How is it that a man with demons, as the Bible says, a man with an unclean spirit can still hear God? Good God Almighty. A man with an unclean spirit, a man with demons can still hear God. I say because God's word and his spirit transcends time. God knew he was going to clean him before Jesus even got there. God knew the man while the man was yet still in 
his mother's womb. God even set it up so that the man would even receive and have the unclean spirit because he needed to show the men of God that was with Jesus, the future disciples, that, that, that this is the Jesus, this is God in the flesh. He needed to show the disciples that, ha, huh, I'm going to do a miracle right here. I'm going to show you in the future what's going to happen. And I want you to see it because if you don't see it, you won't believe it. We got to see if I had a, if I'd have had time to study this like I was supposed to, I would tell you we got to be able to see. Good God Almighty, we got to be able to see. Hallelujah. We got to be able to see. We got to be able to see in the future. We got to be able to see what's going on around us. We got to be able to see in the name of Jesus. He wanted the disciples to be able to see what was going to happen to him, and they still didn't get it. In fact, I've read these scriptures several times, and until the Lord woke me up that morning and showed it to me, I didn't see it. Jesus has, he is the spirit made flesh. He is the all-sufficient one, all-knowing one, all-powerful one, omnipotent one, omniscient one, omnipresent one. He knows all things, sees all things, hears all things. He's the future. He's the beginning and the end. He knows everything that's going to happen. He is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But what I like about this set of scriptures is that he was trying to show the disciples so they wouldn't get sticker shock. You ever bought something and got sticker shock? Have you ever went to buy a car and you thought the car was going to be one price and then you get there to find out, woo, sticker shock. I didn't know it was going to be that much. So he wanted to plant some seeds down into the disciple spirit to show them what is going to happen to me in the future. I'm not saying that Jesus is an unclean spirit. I'm saying that the man had an unclean spirit because what God does is he says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes he'll let you go through trials and tribulations. Sometimes he'll let that old sloop little enemy beat you down, but he's going to clean it all up for his glory. That's what he was showing Jesus. He let this man go into the tombs. He let this man be in the tombs cutting him himself up because the unclean spirits had attacked this man's heart his spirit and his mind so he had an unclean spirit in his in his body and it was causing him to cut himself well you say how does that line up i wouldn't should i should have called it equilibrium how does that balance out how can you compare that to jesus because we with our unclean spirits have put him up on the cross and because we was putting him up we put him on the cross because of our sins and our unclean spirit that's here on the earth today, brought into the earth through sin and uh, through sin because of Eve and Adam, who initiated and started the first sins that are here on earth. All of that sin is unclean spirits. <laughs> unclean spirit put Jesus on the cross where you say you said he was a spirit where he knew he came so that he could do away with that forever that unclean spirit caused Jesus that that the man in the tomb was cutting and scratching himself but Jesus himself ended up on the cross with 39 cuts and 39 scratches on his back so that by his stripes we could be healed that unclean spirit did it to him but God raised him up from it he was showing the disciples himself he's got preemptive spirit in him he knows what's gonna happen before it happens glory be to God that's right glory be to God so I say again Jesus has the preemptive spirit he's showing the disciples what's gonna happen to me in the future just hang on in we're here with me i'm showing you something the man was in the tomb cutting himself didn't even know why he was doing it he was a foreshadowing of what was to come he was in there screaming and hollering and shouting and crying the people was walking around saying that man is crazy that man got an unclean spirit that man is possessed by the devil but he was foreshadowing Jesus. Uh, he was foreshadowing what was going to come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was showing them that Jesus was going to be whooped by the unclean spirit. But it would not have power over him. I tell you, Jesus got power over every demonic spirit. Jesus got power 
over every unclean spirit. He was in a tomb, y'all, but he didn't stay there. I'm sure when the people was walking by crying and hearing him crying, brother, laughing and picking at him, I'm sure they thought to themselves, he gonna be here forever. He is up here crying. We're not going over there messing with him. He got an unclean spirit. Wait a minute. He broke the chains. How did he do that when he's possessed by a devil? That's what's doing it. He's possessed by an unclean spirit. That's how he got power to break the chains. But God said, not so. I had to show you that because King Jesus got the power to break chains. I got to take it back from the underworld and give it back to the world it belonged to and always been with. King Jesus, hallelujah. I wish I had time. I wish I would have studied and really prepared because God is showing us something. The preemptive spirit. He's, it's prophecy. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I heard R.A. R. A. Vernon say it one time, and I'm not trying to copycat anybody. I just love the word, but it's the uh, uh, Jesus was a... Um, uh, he didn't say it like this, but he's so, sort of like a visual theologian. He shows you, you know, he, if I can't tell you, if I can't verbalize it, I'm letting you see it. This man is in the tomb and he's been put there because of unclean spirits. Well, <laughs> I'm here trying to tell him all I can about God, <laughs> but there's a higher purpose. <laughs> I got, I must go by the cross. Peter said, don't go by the cross. Peter said, not so, but Jesus stood up and told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> get thee behind me. The same Peter that said you're the rock, and upon the, uh, the same Peter that said uh, your name, you're Jesus, you're Jesus, you're God, and God said, Peter, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell cannot come against you. Was the same Peter that said when Jesus was explaining to him that uh, this temple is going to be uh, torn down and then raised back up. Peter jumped up and said, Not so. I know we need some Peters in our corner. I know we need some Peters in our corner. I know every once in a while we need somebody that would jump up and say not so I want somebody to support me I want somebody to pick me up I want somebody to stand up for me but every once in a while you just got to go through and Jesus said no sir get thee behind me Satan you won't block me from my purpose my purpose is to serve God you won't block me from the cross cause I got to go anyway you won't block me from getting all these seeds that God got for me I'm called I'm called. I'm called for a higher purpose. You won't block me, Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. That won't Peter's talking. That was an unclean spirit. We are all subject every once in a while, God forbid, but we are subject to unclean spirits. We're subject to when somebody don't want to do us right at McDonald's, we might just cuss them out. We're subject to when somebody hurts one of our children, meaning we might want to fight. We're subject to lose our patience every once in a while. That's why the Lord said we got to have the fruits of the Spirit. We got to have more love, more joy, more peace, more kindness, because if we're not careful, we'll get subject and, and, and touched by an unclean spirit and do something out of character that we normally would not have done. But God, hallelujah. So I said, again in Mark. He showed him that he uh, writ, he, he had the power even with the unclean spirits. The unclean spirits got power, y'all. You be, be careful because it's the spirit. That's why you got to have the spirit of the Holy Ghost. You got to have the spirit of the living God. The unclean spirit had the, the power to break feathers and break chains. So number one, that scared the people. Number two, he was crying. See, Jesus had power. And has power, not had, has power, is the power, all knowing, all seeing, I'm not present. Jesus had power over unclean things. And so this man is preemptive. He's a foreshadowing. He's showing him himself, but he's showing him that what's going to put me on the cross ain't going to keep me on the cross. God got me because he's using me even right now. I'm going to deliver the unclean spirits out of this man. That's why the man said, why do you mess with me before the time, God? And I don't understand it all. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm like that, that, that eunuch. Uh, I need some help. Some, some, some more help, some more understanding, some more reading, but it's in here. And I know I'm right about it because it was God that gave it to me. And I'm not trying, I'm not better than anyone else, but God is the one that gave it to me. And I know God is right about it, even if I'm not. Hallelujah. God is right about it, even if I'm not. I'm not. He's showing.
remind the disciples that it's a foreshadowing, glory be to God. It's a foreshadowing of the things to come. They're going to put me in a bar or tomb, but in three days, I'm coming up out of there. Hallelujah. And the same way Jesus came up out of there, this man was delivered by King Jesus. That gave God, Jesus, the power to deliver us. It's a foreshadowing. God bless you. May heaven smile on you. Thank you, Hampton University, for letting me use this pulpit. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, I pray. Amen. Woo, holly.